Today we're going to talk about Tiki and some of those mystery syrups. Stay tuned. Welcome to Combat Cocktails. I'm Derek, and today we're going to continue with part three of our three-part series, all about tiki cocktails and demystifying some of the ingredients so that you're not as intimidated about what you're doing, and you can go out and start thinking about making some tiki drinks without having to pee your pants. Since you're here and you watched all of our great content, please like this video and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. You also can click the bell icon, and that will allow you to get notifications, hopefully, whenever we put out a new video. So during Tiki Month, we're going to cover a bunch of Tiki recipes. Thus, the whole term Tiki Month to begin with. So let's talk about these syrups. These crazy little syrups that you're going to need. In this upcoming week, we're going to need some of these. Not all of them, but it's good to know what they are. That way you're not worried about it when you see them called for in a, in a Tiki book, like Sippin' Safari or Beach Bumberry Remixed. And if you're lucky, folks like uh, Martin Kate at Smuggler's Cove, they, uh, and, and, and to some degree even uh, the Jeff Berry books, they'll give you the recipes for some of the syrups. Other ones are a little bit more mysterious, so let's cover them all. So outside of having a massive rum selection to pick from, the syrups is your next thing. And of course you can watch the video on some of the styles of rum using tiki. But these syrups, they're just as mysterious, maybe even more so. There's only so many islands, but you can make a syrup out of anything. The one benefit, though, to these syrups is you can usually find a do-it-yourself at home syrup recipe to get the job done. That way, if you're in Australia and there's no way you're going to be able to ship some of these syrups over to you, you can make them at home. Oh, yeah, and that one too. So the first thing we must cover is orgeat. It's pronounced, it's O-R-G-E-A-T. I'm going to see if I can put words down there so you can see it. Most people call it orgate. It's orgeat or orja. Something in that realm usually gets you closer. That way you just sound like you know what you're talking about. You could be a tiki file like everybody else. But in its roots, it's an almond syrup. It's made with almonds and sugar. And maybe rose water or orange blossom water. Orjat, we'll talk about orjat in a minute. Let's just kind of cover these. These are orjats. Typically, you see Libra Co. You'll see uh, BG Reynolds. Those are a couple of the big ones. This, this Falernum stuff is kind of interesting. So Falernum is an almond, a ginger, Lime, allspice, clove, vanilla, and it usually has a lot of vibrant clove action. There's not a lot of brands out there that are making falernum. I'm, I've asked the Liber & Co. people to consider making them a falernum so I'd have another option. Right now, it's just BG Reynolds is the only option, and I'm out of stock, I think. So those should be coming in in a week or so. Maybe by the time this video is out, you'll see them um, at awesomedrakes.com, obviously. So that is a very hyper-specific series of spices. And it, it, they all come at you. So this is a syrup that you could probably make at home. Usually it's made with a base of rum. These are sugar, so you can get a rum like a Velvet Falernum, which is a rum base um, that you could purchase, but in a liquor store that has that Falernum flavor or BG Reynolds. Do it yourself if you want to, but it sounds like a lot of work. I can tell you because making your own shot tends to be a lot of work. What's not a lot of work is a honey mix. So a honey mix is usually just three to one is the kind of the general consensus is three parts honey, one part water, just to make the honey so it flows a little bit better and doesn't just stick to everything like your jiggers and your spoons and your shakers. So a honey mix, if you see that call for in a recipe, actually I have a video on honey mix, so just watch the video if you want to know more in depth about honey mix, but that's another mix. The other one that you'll see sometimes call for in cocktails, especially I think the zombie, uh, and a few others, but the combination actually is played played off in a lot of drinks, especially at Smuggler's Cove and stuff, is Don's Mix. Don's Mix is special, and we'll go through exactly what Don's Mix, the, the history behind Don's Mix. But for now, just remember, Don's Mix is cinnamon simple syrup and grapefruit. And yes, BG Reynolds sells Don's Mix. They rebranded it. It's called Paradise Blend. You can Google it. I will have this available at awesomedrakes.com again, probably by the time you see this. I just need to take the new photos. You might also see Don's Gardenia Mix. That's honey, butter, cinnamon syrup, vanilla syrup, and allspice liqueur, or allspice dram. That's a mouthful. Like, that is some very, that's like full larinum all over again, but with butter. So you'll see that used, uh, I think it's called for in the, in the uh, Pearl Diver. I don't know if it's called for or anything else. Uh, I'm sure there's derivatives of it, the Deep Sea Diver. Um, that Mariano did at Mai Kai is no doubt going to have a lot of the same secret ingredient in it. And some people have figured out ways of kind of building other components to get similar flavors without as much complexity and making a very hyper-specific syrup that's only used in one or two cocktails. And lastly, 
Actually, I got another product to show you. Fashionola syrup. So Fashionola syrup is something that's often used in uh, hurricanes. The original hurricanes called for Fashionola syrup. It's not one of those mystery syrups. The mystery is actually from these guys, Jonathan English. They make a red Fashionola syrup. I'm, tr I'm working with them to try and get these for the store. Um, one of the things I, I could could not I could do with better is their use of high fructose corn syrup. Uh, I'd like more natural product. But this is like a proprietary blendish type thing that it's a secret recipe, right? So to make fashionola syrup like this, to make fashionola syrup the way it was done with the original Hurricane, this is probably the product you would use. All that being said, there's also Cocktail and Sons fashionola syrup. Obviously it's a smaller bottle. This is all natural product made by uh, Max over at Cocktail and Sons. This is only made during the June-ish season when strawberries are in season because one of the bases has strawberries, fresh strawberries. So if you're looking for this, this you can find once a year for about a month or two and then it's gone. I have it at awesomedrakes.com right now. I bought like three cases of it because I know it's going to be very hard to get this year. So if you're looking for something that uses, uh, that's a fashionable design for your hurricanes, you could try this. And just like most syrups that have existed in the world, when people cannot find the original syrups, they need to come up with a substitution. And the substitution that has existed for the hurricane for eons or so is passion fruit syrup. Labyrinth Co. has a tropical passion fruit syrup. BG Reynolds has a passion fruit syrup. There's probably other ones. One of the key things about syrups and why maybe a DIY isn't exactly the same as the bottled is this is consistent. So if you have a cocktail or you design a cocktail that's using this specific passion fruit, it's only going to taste the same with that specific product. If you make your own passion fruit syrup and if you could do that, I'd love to taste it. Send me a bottle because passion fruit is a pain to work with. The consistency is going to be different depending on the season, the year how many of the passion fruit were in the sun at a specific period of time. Same for oranges and citrus. The reason a lot of these products exist is they, the, the crafters are generating a consistent flavor by balancing all those flavors to compensate. So if they don't have a good almond year, if that's the thing, then you can maybe bring in a little bit more sugar. Or if you are making something that's, say, a Don's mix that's supposed to use white grapefruit that has like a seasonality of like a month, and the rest of the time you can only get pink grapefruit and it's sweeter than white grapefruit, then you can balance the sugar against the grapefruit for a specific consistent flavor. And now, if you had to choose any of these specific syrups, if, if you said, Derek, I can only buy one, what should I get? Well, there's tons of cool passion fruit syrup recipes I've been putting out. But, for a tiki focus, almond syrup is the way to go. Or jat. You will be able to, if you took a daiquiri, instead of using regular simple syrup, you used almond syrup, you're going to get something that tastes like a Mai Tai, because <laughs> it pretty much is. The, the almond flavor that's inherent to this product makes things taste tiki. And since they were used a lot in tiki, you'll find lots of recipes calling for orjat. Second on that list, I would say, is falernum. If you own orjat and falernum, you're conquering the list. The only things you might not have is vanilla syrup, which you can make, simple syrup and vanilla extract. Dawn's Mix, which you can make cinnamon syrup and grapefruit juice. Or you need cinnamon syrup in a lot of tiki recipes. Fine, take some cinnamon sticks, stick them in some syrup while you're making your simple syrup. Boom! I have an entire video on syrups. You should watch it. Now, what makes this so mysterious? The reason that we have the tiki drinks we have today that have some of the authentic flavors is thanks to Jeff Barry. What Jeff did was decrypt a lot of the mystery that was put in place by Folks like Don Beach and folks like Mariana Lisadini, who had uh, built recipes, and since Mariano worked under Don Beach, he understands the process. What Don Beach did is said, "Hey, I want to just I want to have these mystery liquids that nobody knows what they are. So I'm going to just put a number on them. Spices number four. What the hell is spices number four? It didn't matter. The bartender knew I need three ounces of spices number four." Six ounces of spices number two, and this other thing, which is a blend of grapefruit juice and spices number four. Well, great. If you want to make this and you don't know what spices number four is, you can't reproduce it. Thus, when the bartenders were poached to other areas, they didn't always know what the heck something was, so they had to kind of make up the flavor. Now, spices number four, if you smell it, has a little bit of a cinnamon flavor to it because it's cinnamon simple syrup. So what Barry did was he went and tracked down 
notebooks, sticky notes, anything he can get, bartender's books that they used at Dawn Beach. And what he did is he found, oh, this calls for two parts grapefruit and one part spices number four, found who made spices number four, and who was the producer of it, found their notes, found people to interview, figured out that it was cinnamon, and went, wait a minute, cinnamon, simple syrup, and grapefruit is Dawn's mix. Now we can unlock everything that called for spices number four, including things that just called for spices number four to begin with. Rinse and repeat through all the different syrups, and you start to find and unlock the mystery that Dawn Beach encrypted within his drinks. But that was in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. These discoveries are fairly recent. So, for a long time, people were just making stuff up, which is why you could go to five different Chinese restaurants across five different countries and get five different versions of a zombie. One thing you might not know, I didn't know, was that Falernum was not invented by Don Beach, nor was Orjac. These are not things that he said, hey, let's build this hybrid of a thing and use it. Falernum is an island syrup that was first published in 1896. Don Beach wasn't born until 1907. So this product existed before he was born. All he did was leverage what it was and its taste to create his own specific cocktails with it. Orjat is actually a French term, which originally was, I think, orja or, or, or something that uh, translated to barley. So what they would do is create barley oil and they would use that as a flavoring. Unfortunately, barley oil is pretty bland. So they started to bring in some almond to it to give it some flavor and some, some additional nuance. Today, obviously, it's there's no barley at all. It's just oh. almond. But this type of product was used in the 18th century to flavor cordials, something you could drink after dinner or whatever. And, and the key here was that barley oil and, as it turns out, almond oil can survive outside of the refrigerator. So if you had this oil emulsification, you could store it in the times before refrigeration existed. Yeah, that was a thing. So this was actually built out of shell stability as a flavoring. Then folks like Don Beach and Trader Vic figured out how to utilize this for something different. Add some sugars in there to make it sweet and boom, my tie is born, baby. So given all of that, now you have some key components to what makes up a tiki drink. You have, if you've watched our video on rums, you understand what rums and why islands are specific to rums. You understand the mentality and the people who created it and you understand the syrups that they used to make their creations varying and flavorful. There's no more intimidation to making a tiki drink. Now it just comes down to the process. Is it blended? Is it shaken? Does it have a cool garnish? So you should now be pretty prepared for tiki month. That's it. Sidebar for more videos. Down below, you can check out awesomedrinks.com where you can get the bartender starter kit to get yourself started. And while you're there, pick up some syrups like passion fruits and orjat. And of course, the Fashionola while it's in stock. We're teaching you how to drink.